Hanukkah is about miracles. The rabbis didn't like miracles. Find stories in the Gemara of different great people that were in need of something, so they performed a miracle. And the senior rabbis were critical. We were put into this world to make sure to make use of nature the way it was created. Miracles, just do what you want. <laughs> You're a holy man, forget about nature. Forget about all the struggles of life that God created, that was the plan. It's the easy way of circumventing all the challenges of living in this world. So why are we celebrating miracles? <laughs> miracles have one purpose, one legitimate purpose, and that is to give clarity when things are hazy. Hellenism took over the country. A handful, a handful of faithful, loyal Jews of the family of the Kohanim, they decided to stand up and fight. What were they thinking? What were they thinking? They were relying on miracles? You're not supposed to rely on miracles. That's not what it's about. doesn't say they were relying on miracles. They were ready to give their lives for what they knew was right. Someone had to stand up and do something. So what do you know? They won. It was guerrilla warfare. Shooting bows and arrows from the elephant against the elephants. The tanks of those days. They won. And it was miraculous. A handful of untrained, idealistic, passionate Jews against an army of Syrian mercenaries. So first of all, why did the miracle happen? It happened because they weren't counting on a miracle. They were ready to give their lives for this. And then miracles happen.
How come? What's the science? For a human being to risk his life for what he believes in is fighting so much within him. I mean, the instinct to survive is the most basic one. When you choose to overcome your nature as a human being, you've created for yourself a whole different sphere of existence. If you behave supernaturally, you've joined a different kind of world. And miracles happen. But one second. We're still not so excited about miracles. <clears throat> so they were victorious. They come to the temple, which was defiled. They want to light the menorah, and there's no oil. They find a little bit of oil, and what do you know? It lasts for eight days. Another miracle. What was that for? You see, the one purpose of miracles is for Hashem to reveal Himself. The Hanukkah story, for those who have been rewriting Jewish history, is victory over oppression. That's the story of Hanukkah and the story of Purim and the story of Pesach. Victory over tyranny. No. It was the victory the loyal Jews who were willing to give their lives for the truth of Hashem and the way of life he prescribed versus Hellenism. The problem is that the people who rewrite history, and I assume the Hellenists of that day too, could always find some natural explanation for winning the battle. I mean, face it, no one ever won against guerrilla warfare. The mightiest of armies had to leave. You can't win. So maybe it was natural. Comes Hashem and declares, okay, go explain this one. <laughs> one day's worth, one night's worth of oil lasts for eight days. We're not celebrating the miracle because we like miracles. Because the laws of nature are so confining. We only wish, we only wish we could just perform miracles. There go all your financial woes, all your worries, medical. Get rid of your enemies. Just miracles. No. No, that's simplistic. That's running away from the responsibilities of life. A miracle is Hashem revealing Himself. And here He did it.
The story of Hanukkah is celebrating number one. That the faithful Jew gets up and he's ready to give his life for his values. And yes, he's successful. Miraculously. And then Hashem backs him up. And performs an open miracle so that Hashem's involvement cannot be denied. Because that really was the goal. The goal was to make it clear again to the Jewish people, Hellenism, the fad of the day, the first real intellectual challenge to Judaism. may have some nice elements in it. But you can't deny the Creator. <laughs> the Maral points out that in reality, the celebration of Hanukkah is not about oil burning for eight nights. What was that? Sig what the significance of it in Jewish history, Jewish destiny? The victory in battle made a difference. We reestablished self-rule. The Beis Hamikdash was rededicated. <laughs> Says the Maral. Of course, what we're celebrating is the fact that <coughs> the Maccabees won in battle. However. The announcement we're making to the street, the Persume Nisa, as we call it, is announcing the miracle of the oil so that people have no alternative than to attribute it to Hashem. So what are the lessons for us? Well, what is it that we're supposed to be relearning every Hanukkah and rededicating ourselves to our Hanukkah? The world of the miracle? It's the world of being prepared to make any sacrifice to stand up for our values when they're being trampled on. Just in case you didn't notice, Hellenism in a new form has taken over Western civilization, including so many Jews who are at the forefront of the fight against morality and values. We who know have to be ready to make any sacrifice for the sake of reversing the trend. First, getting Jews to understand, yes, there is a creator. There is absolute truth. There is absolute morality. No, life is not about just respecting everybody's right to an opinion. There is right and wrong. Those who believe that wrong is right are wrong. We have to stop at nothing. We have to try what we can. 
No, we're not counting on miracles. But, but don't tell anyone, but it'll happen. Our goal is not miraculous. If all of Western civilization could have been convinced to dump their values, it's a matter of a couple of years. Then it shouldn't take a miracle to get them to think otherwise. We believe, we believe in the Jews' common sense. But we like miracles. Because nobody's gonna be make, gonna be able to make it as clear as Hashem Himself. So to rely on miracles is the easy way out and say, well, yeah, we'll give it a try and Hashem will perform miracles. Forget it. But to give it a roll and be confident that Hashem will make it happen. That's the Hanukkah message. No, it's not victory over oppression. It's not the victory of democracy over tyranny. If anything, it's the victory of truth over the Greek democracy. Perhaps one of the first things we gotta teach the Jewish people is that Hanukkah is about the victory of Torah values over Greek values, which most Jews today believe in. So when you light your menorah, ask yourself, what are you prepared to do to stand up for Torah values? What are you willing to sacrifice? To Jews to know what's true and what isn't. And you could also perhaps think about how clear you are because every one of us is influenced by Western society. Hanukkah is the festival of thanks. The mitzvah of the day is, yes, lighting candles, but halil v'hodoya. Acknowledging, praising. We thank Hashem for what He did then. We thank Hashem that we're still around and know what's right. We're not for Hanukkah. We'd all be hell in us. We 
We're not for Hanukkah. Who knows? We don't deny absolute truth. Yes, it's miraculous that there's still a Jewish nation. It's miraculous that there's still a part of the Jewish nation that has maintained its values. But remember, one of those values is being prepared for every sacrifice to maintain those values. You know, to the Greeks, although the philosophers taught something much more profound, they have no problem tolerating religion. What do you mean there were so many different gods they worshipped? the problem with us? Come on, there were so many temples in Greece to these pagan gods. What was the problem with the Jews? You see, they didn't mind a pagan culture. They believed in tolerating all cultures. <laughs> the problem with us is because we didn't talk about culture. We talked about truth. And that's why left-wing liberalism, their problem is with Orthodox Jews. Because we claim that God is not cultural. He's real. He's really there. He created and sustains. And his Torah is absolute truth. It's not about tradition. It's not about culture. Our festivals are not about nostalgia and sentiment. It's real. Our souls are not this touchy-feely idea to make us feel good. They're real. We have souls that are more real than our bodies. Our souls never decompose. It's got to be clear to us. If Judaism to you is tradition, if Judaism to you is cultural, the Greeks would never have had a problem with you. What we fought for then, and what the miracles came to support, was the truth of Judaism. It's real. Every mitzvah creates a reality. Every avera destroys. Mitzvahs are life-giving. 
Averis diminish. This is a reality. Yes, and when you're diving, you're talking to somebody. Who listens? It's not a ceremony. Judaism is not about ceremonies. It's about reality. This is what we stand for. This is what won out over the Greeks. This is what's got to be clear to us, and this is what we've got to fight for. And be prepared for any sacrifice. And then Hashem will back us up with miracles and reveal himself once and for all. That's Hanukkah. A lot different than what they teach in Hebrew school. You can have your donuts. But that's not what Hanukkah is about. You can play dreidel. That's not what Hanukkah is about. You can do some research as to what the dreidel is all about. But Hanukkah is about what we stand for. What we live for. And what we're, pre we're prepared to make sacrifices for. You're ready, the miracles will come. We can end with the prayer that the Ramah gives us. If you forget Al Hanisim, you can say at the end of benching, Harachaman, the merciful one, who Yasel on Nisim and Iflaos, he should perform miracles for us. Kasha Osola will say, like he did for our ancestors or forefathers. In those days, at this time.